My name is Risa Levine. Let me, let me get into my PowerPoint here. Uh, here we go. I'll be sort of going back and forth on this thing. I'm a producer for an organization called Citizen Shift, Parole Citoyenne, en français. Aussi, je veux dire que s'il y a des francophones ici, je ne vous pas. Je parle deux langues, donc no problem for both languages. If you want to ask questions, feel free. Um, so I work for Citizen Shift, Parole Citoyenne, which are two uh, websites that were started up at the National Film Board of Canada uh, six and seven years ago, respectively. So we've been around for a little bit for a little bit of time. Last year, the film board uh, we actually moved out of the film board to become independent organizations, and we're working with um, the Institut de Nouveau Monde, uh, based in Montreal, um, and they are now our host organizations. And our main uh, goal or role is really hosting media for social change of all sorts. So um, we're an open network, kind of like a, a YouTube for social advocacy or social change. We have um, documentaries, animated films, all kinds, shorts, long, uh, you name it, we'll host it as long as we're talking about something for social change of some sort. And um, we do a lot of educational work as well. We do workshops and uh, work with teachers to bring uh, media to their classrooms. I just want to get a sense of who's here in the room. Uh, how many people are teachers here? Are we like, okay, so it's not? Uh, uh, okay, that's good. And other people from organizations, I imagine? Okay, good. So I'll try to keep it more towards the organizations because it's a little bit of a different sort of orientation in terms of talking about using digital, uh, digital media in the classroom or in, the organ in your organization, slightly different approach, but really when you get down to it, the same kinds of tools. So um, how many people here have worked with media before, have created some sort of, okay, good. So a lot of people have some background, so that's, that's great. Because it does take a little bit of practice and a little bit of jumping into it uh, to get going. So. If I can leave one thing here with you all today, it's a whole bunch of resources because we obviously don't have time to actually do some exercises, which would have been really fun. But if I can leave you with a whole bunch of resources uh, that you can then go and follow up on and, and also the pique your interest uh, and curiosity for using media in your organizations because um, more and more media is all around us now and uh, it's kind of like, um, uh, un outil incontournable, as we would say in French. Let's see where we're at now. So this is a little, just a little bit of the uh, overview of what we're going to look at here today. Some of the base, basics behind digital stories. Some of, and then I'd like to get a little bit into some of the production tools and things that we can work with. Okay. So media literacy. I'm here more to talk, to take the whole notion of literacy into a new domain, and that is really about media literacy. Um, as I said before, media is all around us. We are surrounded by media everywhere we look. We can't get around it. It's in all of our cityscapes or, or countryscapes or everywhere that we look, from advertising to uh, TV to net, media is probably one of the most important uh, literacies that we can actually gain in today's world, and yet we don't really spend a lot of time talking about what media literacy is or why that's not just important but crucial, I would say. Um, and I think if we start to really reflect on the media around us, we'll start to start to process it in a different way. And certainly when we start creating media, we come to think of it and the media that's fed to us all the time in a very different way. And we begin to start to, to understand how easy it is to manipulate messages in media. So certainly if you're an organization, it's of great interest to learn how to influence people, how to get interest in your organization, how to I'm going to use the word marketing, although I have a bit of issues personally with taking a marketing approach to everything that we do, and I like to think that we can actually use media and promote our organizations um, in a social marketing term. Let's look at it that way. Um, 
So once you're getting into creating uh, media, of course, we're getting into all the higher order learning skills, right? If anybody, people have backgrounds in psychology or learning theories, you know, the Maslow's uh, needs and Bloom's taxonomies and all that, media creation always comes up, ranks up into the top of those hierarchies when we're talking about, um, you know, really understanding, assimilating, using, analyzing, uh, the works that we do and, and our society around us because as we're using these tools we're developing these skills, these analytical skills. So media obviously is hugely important. Whoops, where am I going? Okay. Um, digital storytelling. Now this is something that's actually sort of controversial and I took this from uh, Wikipedia and which I thought was pretty good because as I was doing some of the research for this and other workshops that I've given in digital uh, storytelling, I realized that there's such a huge range of opinions of what digital storytelling really is. Um, you know, there's the Center for Digital Storytelling in California, and I believe there's a chapter actually up here in Toronto, and um, they have a very sort of um, clear sort of notion of what digital storytelling is, and they really frame it around personal stories, engaging through our own experiences, getting people to create by their own voice. And then um, as we get out and I start to look at more uh, sort of new technologies and transmedia and all these kinds of new trends, they're looking at digital storytelling. They still call it digital storytelling, but they frame it in a very different way. They're talking about gaming. They're talking about multi-platform storytelling. They're talking about uh, the things we see now on TV through movies and comic books and, and uh, all using a whole series of media to tell stories. So we're still, everywhere I look, when you get right down to the core of it, we're still talking about the importance of stories and the strength and the power of stories, but the way we're telling them is changing quite a lot. So here's a couple of resources um, that are pretty key to the notion of uh, storytelling, the Center for Digital Storytelling, as I mentioned before, and the Media Awareness Network for Educators, um, you probably know about this, amazing tools in there. Their whole um, reason for existing is uh, to give um, media literacy tools to educators and parents. Whoops, let me, before I go there, Maybe um, some people can tell me, like, what kinds of things, why would you want to use uh, digital storytelling? What kinds of things might you want to get across by using, and I've probably just flashed all the answers, but uh, anybody have some suggestions on uh, why you might want to create a digital story? History of your organization. That's a good reason, yeah. Yeah. to the board members. Yeah. Certainly, that's a great one. Yeah. Brand marketing. Absolutely. Yeah, very powerful. Can be very powerful for your organization. Yeah. Let's see, so these are all the kinds of things that we have in there. Group building is also one that could be pretty interesting. You know, even if these some of these stories are never published, the process of actually going through them can be a really great way to get people to work together because media creation is a team effort. So from research to you know, using the equipment to putting it online or not, um, all these are different kinds of tasks and they take different kinds of skills. So it, as in filmmaking, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Somebody might be really handy with the equipment, somebody else may be a great writer. So it's to see what kinds of skills you might have in your organizations, it's a good way to do it. Um, but certainly for your organizations, getting your message out there is probably one of the key reasons to do digital stories. So I was going to show off some examples and uh, a kind of a range of examples that I found out there and there were so many it was hard to pick really. So let's see if uh, we can see some of these. Oh, they're going to reload, aren't they? Okay. Um, let me see if I have them. So here, this one was one done in Toronto, and I may not play right through to the end of all of them because uh, I'd like to have enough time, so, but we'll start by looking at some of them. If they load, of course.
One day I got a letter in the mail says that I was phase one of revitalization. My building was soon going to be demolished. I was devastated. That building was my first real home and I don't want to let go of it. When I first moved to Regent Park, all my friends were shocked. They told me it was very violent there. I for one did not see what the problem was. Regent Park reminded me of back home, the way you connect with people. I know my neighbors. I talked to them when I went to buy milk and when I took my kids to playground. All my kids had been born there and were attached to as much as I was. But now the place I had all my memory from was about to vanish. My first response when I heard the news was, why me? Why my building first? There were many rumors going on around. The new building would be given to the rich people and they won't let us come back. As the day went by, I found out I was the only person left in the building. All the cockroaches and mice came in my place. One night, about 3 a.m., there was a big bang in my door. I was alone and afraid. I called security. There was no light in my hallway. I couldn't see who was there. Finally, the day came when I had to leave. Packing up my box, I felt so much sadness more than living back home. I moved to a temporary building until the new one was built. Even though I was there for three and a half years, in my brain I was just waiting to move again. One day I saw them cutting down the tree in front of my building. Another day I saw a demolition truck arrive. I was looking at my home disappear a bit by bit. Call Street is a new street, so new the name had to be added on Google Map. My new home had brand new appliances, wooden floor and two washrooms. My boxes all packed and ready to go. I move in on Friday. So there you see that's a very kind of simple and really kind of a nice little story that obviously had a big impact on the people who were involved in making it because it was quite a personal story. And um, you know, being shared with others could have a big impact also in the right circum circumstances and circles. So this is on the site for the Center for Digital Storytelling, and there's a lot of them out there, so you can go and have a look at them. Um, for the next one I'm going to show you, there's like a, quite a range that I, I chose. Uh, the next one is a much more professionally done digital story, so just to see the sort of differences. Um, and maybe you've probably seen or you might have seen, oh, it's not loading. Okay, well, maybe we'll skip that one. Has anybody seen this, the girl effect? No? Oh, there it is. <laughs> 